This is the time when our faith, either we have it or we don't. Take care, take caution, but this is not the spirit behind the voices that you're hearing. They say through the media and so forth, all of the events that are taking place and everything that's connected to it, and you keep hearing that, and these voices are having influence. Here we go. There are voices within. I don't know if this is coming up, where it's coming up, but help me. Voices within. Go back to that one. Help me in the back, back there. There you go. That's good. Voices within. When you read about this, you'll find in Luke chapter 12, verse 17, an example. I won't go to all of this because I don't have time. But this voice speaks from the senses, from a humanistic point of view. This is the man in the story in the Bible where he has built, he's built a barn and he's filled it up and he has this feeling, I need to enlarge what I'm doing. So the voice within him said, go ahead and do this. And yet God's voice comes later and says, thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. So every one of us are dealing with the voices within. And then there is, number two, the voices without. Luke 23, 21. Luke 23, 21. If you want to look over there real quick, you can see it maybe on your paper. Luke 23, 21. These are the voices that were outside when Jesus, an innocent man, after being examined by Pilate, by Caiaphas and others, and Pilate comes back and says, I find no fault with him. But the rhetoric, listen to me, look at me, the the, the panic, the fear, all of that drove a crowd that just days before hollered Hosanna and laid down palm branches and clothes to welcome Messiah on the donkey. A few days later, they're in such a fear that they scream, crucify him. These are the voices that are without, the voices that speak from a worldly influence. My friends, you're going to run into them tomorrow on your job, in the mall, wherever it is that you're at. You're going to run into people that are more in, and listen, wait a minute, I might be talking to folks in here who are more influenced by what they're saying on the news and what somebody is repeating in your head than what this book says. I'm going to stop right here and say this to you. The voices within and the voices without can only be combated by the voice of the Lord. There are the voices, number three, below. John 10 and 10, the Bible says that the thief comes but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Isn't that powerful? He says in chapter number uh, four, the voice uh, that comes in the, in the wilderness, the voice that is below, the voice of the enemy. This is the voice of the enemy. Remember the voice of the enemy that was, had such uh, 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 disdain and, and, and such desire and thinking himself to be as God followed Jesus into the wilderness in Matthew 4 and says, if you are the Son of God, if you are always questioning whether or not he was the Son of God, and Jesus came back with the Word, with the Word, with the Word. I can assure you, you're dealing with all of these voices right now. The voices that are within, the voices that are without, the voices from below, but the voice that you need to listen to is the voice that is coming from above. John 10, verse 26 and 27, we said it to you already, read it to you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. I know them and they follow me. I want to ask you, do you know the voice of the Lord? If you know the voice, if you don't know the voice of the Lord, you you are too far away 
And I can assure you there'll be another voice, one of these other three, that will fill that gap right there. And the next thing you know, the victory you got on Sunday, you will have lost it by Wednesday because you didn't solidify your faith upon faith and line upon line, precept upon precept. Ladies and gentlemen, get you some of this bread right here. This is the living bread. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If you listen to too much of that out there and the voices even on the inside of you, it'll steal all the faith you've got and ladies and gentlemen it'll leave you in a place where you don't even believe uh, that God is able but I came to tell you above coronavirus, above the terrorists, above Osama bin Laden and all the rest of them that's ever come and gone, there is a God in heaven, hallelujah who holds all the power in his hand I think you ought to take a second, clap your hands in here, and let the devil know where your faith is at tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. I need you to know how and what the voice of God sounds like. So here we go. God's voice rules by faith, not fear. It rules by faith, not fear. So when God speaks to you, You can always know it's going to be a word of faith. Let the peace of God rule your hearts. Let the peace of God, that word rule there means umpire. You know what the umpire does? He calls the balls and the strikes. So when you're sitting down listening or you're driving in the car, listening to the radio, listening to the news, listening to all this stuff go on. Let the Holy Spirit, the God of peace, who speaks faith and not fear, discern for you what is good and what is not good. And if it's not good, turn it off. Turn on something that's going to build your faith up, ladies and gentlemen. You can't afford to be without faith in this hour. You don't know when you're going to need it. Somebody said, well, pastor, what if I get sick? That's where that faith comes in. Put your faith on the line. Call for the elders of the church. We'll anoint a prayer call, and that prayer of faith will save the sick and raise you up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to believe that God is who he says he is. And if we don't, then let's run out of here. He doesn't rule by panic. So that means everything that's going on right now that's inciting panic is not of God. God is a God of peace. If the news media and others wanted to really help us, they would help bring hope and peace and real answers instead of giving us 30 minutes of problems with no answer. But you know what? That's not their job now, is it? Guess whose job it is? We're the keepers of the good news. We're the keepers of peace. Have you got peace tonight? Come on, somebody. In the middle of all that's going on right now, have you got peace in your heart? If you don't get him secure, wrapped all around you, let him rule every part of your life. Come on, somebody. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God. You're driving down the road and suddenly you sense a disturbance in your peace, whether or not you turn to the right or to the left at the stop sign. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Whichever direction is peace, turn that way. Pastor, it's the long way around. It'll bring you peace. You'll take a tour of scenic highway, whatever that it is. Keep the peace of God ruling your heart. Number two, the voice of the Lord rules by faith and not fear. You know this passage of Scripture. You ought to quote it. Everybody else is right now. They just don't believe it. God's not giving you the spirit. How do I know fear is a spirit? Because the Bible says so. God's not giving you the spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit. Well, what then did he give me if I'm a child of God? He gave me. God's not giving you the spirit of fear, but power. Love, Anna. How many of you know we need a sound mind going on right now? Is this helping anybody right here? Anybody's faith getting up on this? Number three, God's voice rules by being patient, not pushy. Isaiah 52 and 12 says, don't be doing anything in haste. You get the phone call from somebody and they say, listen. So one of the employees told me the other day, said, Pastor, what do I do? They called up and said, they got to have an answer in 24 hours. I said, hang the phone up. Don't let nobody push you into decision. If you don't run, you need to hurry down here and sign this document. The devil is a lie. 
That's completely a, the devil's always pushing you into, into a decision. If you don't have time to pray about it, then it must be from the devil. Leave it alone. Well, pastor, it's a great, it's a great thing. I mean, we can buy uh, gold nuggets. <laughs> All you're going to do is get spray painted rocks. You better wait on the Lord. It's a, if it's a for, listen, if it's truly for God, from God and it's truly for you, it'll be there after you pray and ask the Lord. He operates by patience, not pushy. God's voice rules by good things, not bad. Philippians 4, 8. He says, listen, with all this bad news that's going on, if there's any good, if there's anything virtuous, if there's anything lovely, if there's anything, and he goes into all this litany of telling us how and what to think. If you don't arrest your mind, I've already taught this mind series. I might need to teach it again. If you don't arrest your mind, believe me, whatever you let access through your eyes and your ear gate will get inside of your head and tell you everything that's bad, ugly, all of that. How can I know that God wants us to think good, good things? Because that's how He thinks. He's a good God who desires good things for His people. He's a loving God. He doesn't lie. Come on, all of those things, he says, think on these things. Number five, God's voice rules by the Word of God and not the opinions of men. The Bible says there in 2 Timothy 3 that the Word of God is good for reproof and rebuke and exhortation. He said this thing is not written by men, but men were inspired of the Holy Ghost to write down what it's going to take for you to have faith. And if you'll read this, faith is coming. Tonight while you're sitting here, faith is coming at you. Take hold of it. Get it inside of your spirit. You might not think you need it right now, but when you wake up tomorrow morning, listen, I I didn't know all, I didn't even check the news until late this afternoon, and then I see when I I pulled up some of the places that I go to to find the news, here it is, the World Health Organization has called it a pandemic. So now everything's changing. By this time tomorrow morning, or by tomorrow morning when you wake up, everything could be changing. Changing all over again. The numbers have changed, all that. You cannot let that put you in a state of fear. Bible says this. Let me give you this real quick. The Bible says, I will praise Him in the day, and I will praise Him at night. The words praise there are two different things. I think it's Psalm 113. Two different things right there. Praise Him during the day. The day and the night is not necessarily talking about the light outside or the darkness outside. It's talking about the darkness that's going on around the world. So what do I, and the word pray there, praise there is actually pray. So I praise Him when I can see things, and I pray when I can't see things. Woo! That was just free. So if I know what God's voice sounds like, what is the devil's voice speaking? Here it is. Number one, he always challenges God's word, just like he did in the beginning. Hath God said, hath God said that you can't eat of every tree? No, devil, that's actually not what he said at all. He said, I couldn't eat of this tree, but I could eat of all these other trees. He started out with a lie. He challenges God's Word. But if you don't know God's Word, if you're in biblical ignorance, then He could tell you whatever and you'll believe it. That's the reason why you got to get the Word in. Well, Pastor, I can't digest all of this. Get you one verse and keep repeating it over and over and over all day long until it gets so embedded in your spirit. Trust me, this Word is not just some letters on a page. This is the living Word. So somebody, somebody said, told me the other day, said, yep, said my favorite verse is Jesus wept. Well, you know what? Once you got that one down, move on to another one. But if you got to say every day, Jesus wept, well, what did he weep over? He wept over my soul. He wept over this world. He wept over Jerusalem. Come on, somebody, and just expound and meditate upon that. I can assure you the devil will get tired of hearing that same verse over and over and over again because he'll know you're starting to believe what you're saying. Number two, Satan's voice speaks to pull you away from faith in the cross. I cannot drill this into you enough tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I call this the coronavirus versus the cross because that's where the coronavirus died more than 2,000 years ago. You didn't hear what I said. 
I said, long before it ever arrived on the backside of a Clorox wipe bottle or a Lysol wipe bottle, the power of Jesus Christ at the cross defeated death, hell, and every disease that has ever been known, unknown, or will be known to man. He's already defeated it. you got to realize that if the devil can pull you away from the cross and keeping your faith at the cross, you're defenseless against him. So he'll talk you away from it. A religious spirit will say to you, you don't have to go to church today. This is where we are. You know why some churches and pastors are panicking? Because they have whittled it down to one service a week. And now they can't financially sustain themselves. What are we going to do? Well, let's get some chicken dinners together. Problem, we can't afford the chicken. Come on. I'm just telling you how this whole thing's rolling today. That's the reason why you got to build your own self up praying in the Holy Ghost. Because I don't know. Tonight, there are churches not having service because they called it off and the government said you can't have a gathering. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if that happens in pace? You're, I mean, you're not hearing what I'm saying. The state governor of Washington said you are banned from gathering. Banned. Banned. What you going to do? Have you got enough faith to sustain you? Come on, somebody. Some of y'all live in paycheck to paycheck, and you're living spiritual paycheck to paycheck. You only get your fill whenever you hit one of these services, and if you miss one, you're in a deficit, non-sufficient funds. You better be able to sing your own song, make your own melody in your heart. Come on, somebody. Please. That's the reason why I go to Guatemala. That's the reason why I go to the mission field. Because it constantly reminds me that if I have to get out and walk to church, that went over like a lead balloon, didn't it? No gas. You can't touch, you can't touch the the pump handle because you might get corona. I'm just, I'm not making this up. This is where we are. We're in a state of panic where people are paralyzed. Some of y'all are thinking about it right now. You got to go to the store tomorrow. And if you don't get faith in your spirit and sing a song unto the Lord while you're pushing that buggy, by the time you get to the romaine lettuce, you're going to think about every pesticide and every disease that's ever been sprayed on that piece of lettuce. And you'll say, I can't afford the organic, but I... Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan... His voice comes to pull you away from the cross. Number three, he comes when you are physically and spiritually weak. That's when he wants to talk to you. When you're worn out and tired. Oh, believe me, I've been the victim of it. Worn out and tired. And he'll, I mean, I had a pastor friend call me the other day and said, Pastor, I, I need you to pray for me. I'm, I'm tired. I'm worn out. Feel like giving up, throwing my hands up. I've had two churches call just, just within the past 24 hours saying, Pastor, can you help us? Can you plant a satellite church where we are? I'm telling you the truth. Can you, can you send us a pastor? Can you, can you plant a church? One pastor told me late this afternoon, he said, Pastor, we, we, we've been worn out. We, we've been in the throes now for two years of recovery in the hurricane in Panama City, and, I, and I've resigned my position, and my wife and I are going to just, we're just going away with our kids just to get our sanity. You just pray for us.
Can I say something to you? I hope you don't just come to church and go out, come to church and go out and not get involved because here's the deal. Whether you like it or not, people are looking at this church, to this church, and to the people in this church. And that camera spins around and you're standing there asleep or picking your nose or whatever you're doing and not engaged in worship. I don't think you realize we have a church in Texas that's watching us right now. Right now. Their whole congregation is there watching this service right now. They depend on this Wednesday night service for spiritual food. It's not the only, only table they're eating off of, but it is the lifeline. I cannot stress to you how important you are to the kingdom, because in the days that are ahead, I have told you this for several years, that Pace Assembly is uniquely positioned, uniquely positioned to be able to minister to people. In recent weeks, I've helped pastors who have been on the edge, some that have been in the ministry for 40 plus years that said, one particular couple, said, Pastor, I am done. I said, no, you're not. You got 45 years in this thing. I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do, because this is the heart of Pace Assembly. You get your plane ticket, and you come down here, and this church is going to put you up. I'm going to give you my car to drive around, and you and your wife get recovered and restored, and God's going to give you supernatural strength. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he and his wife are standing in their pulpit, continuing in ministry, unknown even to their congregation. But they're standing in faith right now because this church stood in the gap to keep another soldier on the front line. I'm hurrying, I'm done. Number four, Satan's voice appeals to the flesh. Always talking to your flesh. He said, he did, if he did it to Jesus, he's going to do it to you. Number five, he comes to accuse you constantly. Some of you are going to have a little sniffle, and the first words you're going to hear in your head is, you got it. Come on, somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. How you feeling? Oh, I'm a little weak. Yep, yeah, yeah, you got it. No diagnosis, no doctor, no test, no nothing. You have to have faith embedded in your spirit that at that moment it explodes with the Word of God and with praise out of your mouth. Turn on the praise music as loud as you can. Wake up your kids. Everybody that's sleeping in, come on, we're getting, I know it's Saturday morning, we're going to praise God around here. Now get up and cut the grass. Three things that you can always count on. Number one, Satan always misquotes the Scripture. Number two, he always speaks lies. Always. I don't care what it sounds like. Pastor, that sounds pretty true to me. <laughs> pretty true. Not all the way true. Number three, he always questions your faith. Always. Always questions your faith. Now, I know the fear is real, my friends. There's no doubt about it. But the people of God have got to place their faith in the crucified Christ and don't doubt the power of God in the face of the unknown. Fear and faith are battling, and Jesus, the Bible says this, when Jesus went to Nazareth, his own hometown, he, listen to me, he could not do many miracles because of unbelief in the city. People lost their faith. In his own hometown, he couldn't perform miracles of healing like he wanted to. What's going to happen if the church loses its faith at this critical hour and your hands could be healing hands? Fear kept the woman from going to the doctor, and the Bible says she steadily grew worse, suffered many things of many physicians, the Bible said. Listen to this voice. Until she heard Jesus was coming to town. 
And she said, watch this, she said, now this gives you a license to talk to yourself. So if somebody looks at you and they see your mumbling mouth over there in the car next to you and you're over there talking to yourself, it's all right, it's biblical. That's right. She said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be made whole. That is not a statement of fear. Jesus touched the unclean, the lepers, the lepers, the, 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 the coronavirus of the day. He laid hands on them and rebuked the leprosy. The blind, he opened their eyes. The disease, the Bible says. We don't know all the diseases, but there were many contagious. And watch this. They didn't know that somebody just across town had the same thing they did because they didn't have ABC, NBC, MSNBC, Fox News, and all the rest of them to pound fear into their heart to tell them that there's somebody across town has got the same thing you do. And they died. Come on, church. Are y'all with me here? The Bible says when Jesus got through touching them, they were all made whole. The pulpit has diluted the gospel message until the atonement is not even preached. And I want to tell you something. We used to sing it. We used to sing it that the cross is a double cure. Saved from wrath and made me pure. The cross is not just for your salvation. The cross is the healing power of Christ, the atoning power of Christ. By His stripes we are healed. So believe, this could be the greatest opportunity for believers to be used of God in your lifetime and mine. Stop listening to the voices of fear, doubt, and unbelief, and listen to the voice of God and His Word. Keep your faith firmly planted, nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. Corona means crown, but it's a false crown. It has no power over Christ's crown. Jesus is Lord over all things, including germs, virus, death, hell, and the grave. And if my faith in God and in the cross and I know Him and I trust Him, then my faith then is the most important and powerful weapon against all the fear that is coming against my life. If you're afraid, get close to God in His Word. Get close to God in prayer. Keep your faith in the right place, not in the voices of the news and the naysayers and the doubters and the skeptics. Faith must reside in the object that is capable of dealing with every dominion of our life, past, present, and future future. When you, listen, God is a God of the now. That means this, that God's held up the word, the Bible says, the world's by the power of his word. Did you hear what I just said? And so that word has been holding everything up. It's been holding you together, ladies and gentlemen. The word of God holds us all together. So whatever disease and the sickness and germs did not originate today, they have always been. So the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever can reach into the past and cause the plague that was on your great great grandmother to die because the word of the Lord is forever settled in past, present and future. How do you know it pastor? Because he's Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever.